Hi there. Um, I'm going to give you a little tour of the um, the completed works of phase one of the redevelopment of the Path of Life Garden here at St Gemma's. My name's Isabel and I'm from Lemon Barb and we worked with the fundraising team um, on the development of this space. So as we arrive now at the garden, the new signage will go in in the new year, but we've got some little lavender plants here that will grow up to make a little lavender hedge leading you to this frame of these two lovely balls of holly. And in front of it is our new focal point, the mosaic centrepiece, which was um, designed by many of the staff here at St Gemma's, who even got a chance to come and do some of the mosaicing with the local community artists, seagulls. Um, if we look over to the left, the walls of light have had some new lighting installed. So at dusk, um, lights will come on to illuminate the, the memorial bricks there. In front of it, we've got some pollinator friendly um, planting so it's herbaceous which means it'll go to sleep every winter and come back again in the spring it's not look looking at its best now obviously because it's the end of the season but there'll be a range of whites and purples and blues behind that, um, that the walls of light in this corner is a space where some um, woodland edge wildflower seeds have been planted which will grow in the spring again behind the bench here we've got another area of woodland edge wildflowers which will come through again. Some snowdrops will be joining us here in the garden as well in January and we've got a new native hedge planted around the edge. We've got a temporary screen up behind it so that the space feels a little bit more private. If someone wants to come and spend some time thinking and reflecting on someone they've lost there's a bit more privacy from the car park here and a couple of new benches have gone in too. The other area that we've worked on this time is the woodland wildlife area. So we've got these huge, beautiful sycamore trees, uh, beautiful horse chestnut trees, trees rather, which provide a lot of shade. So rather than trying to get lots of beautiful flowering plants underneath, which don't like the shade, we've gone for woodland edge plants, which tend to have a collection of, of whiter, smaller white twinkly flowers, which will come through. And these will spread to fill the space as well. And we've put in some posts to give a bit of shape and structure, a mini beast hotel and these cairns. So we've reused a lot of the materials that were here on site. The cairns mark the way through the path as, a, as cairns tr were traditionally designed for. And if someone wants to bring a pebble or a stone that means something to them um, when thinking about their loved one, you can bring a stone and add it to the path. You can also bring some bird food if you'd like and add it to the bird table to feed the birds here too. Pablo the cat's enjoying watching the wildlife area as well. Um, we've got a spot for a wheelchair here. Um, to sit next to the bench and we've retopped the bench in a more natural locally sourced larch which is a type of wood that um, is self-preserving so we don't have to put any artificial chemicals on it. Um, we'll clean it up in the spring when, the, when it's drier um, but the local fox has left a couple of footprints on there as well just to show that the wildlife love the spot already. So the other feature that we've been able to put into the garden this time is we've done a little bit of work down here at what we're calling the secret garden. So we wanted to reduce the amount of waste that we sent to landfill, so we've reused some of the turf that was lifted up at the top of the site to make these mounds to create a bit of interest down here at the bottom. Um, and we've retopped the bench down here as well. The idea is that a little person, um, perhaps a child visiting the garden, will come across this um, and be able to have a little bit of a play down here at the bottom. We've also installed a composting and leaf mould system that's going to be finished off in the new year so that all of the green waste and leaves are recycled to keep feeding the garden so that we need less artificial fertilisers. The plan is that phase two of this garden will be developed next year, which is the stretch in between the secret garden here and the woodland wildlife one at the top end, um, where we're planning to introduce where there's more light already, so we'll introduce more colourful and spectacular planting to open up and add colour to the garden as well.